So you may not want to think about this, but I want to ask you, how ready are you for times of crisis, like a recession or another obstacle or challenge that might be coming down the line? Specifically, if you're building a business, how ready is your business for unforeseen challenges? So today I have a guest with me who is an expert at creating systems so that your business can run like a well-oiled machine, not only so that you can grow, but also so that you can weather the storms that might be coming your way. Stacey Tushel started her own business at the age of 18 in her parents' backyard, and then she turned that company into a multi-million dollar business that she still runs today. Stacey is a best-selling author and the founder of Well-Oiled Operations, where she helps small business owners around the world to create systems that facilitate growth. Her podcast, Well-Oiled Operations, now has over 2 million downloads, and she has interviewed guests like Susie Orman. Stacey was also named the 2019 Wisconsin Small Business Person of the Year by the United States Small Business Administration. So it was my absolute pleasure to bring Stacey onto the show and just sit down with her and pick her brain about how business owners can prepare and pivot even during hard times. And I think you're going to find her advice really reassuring for one and very actionable for another. So let's dive in. Well, hey, Stacey, welcome to the show. It is so great to have you here. Hi, Kim. Thanks for, yeah, thanks for having me here. I'm excited to chat today. Yeah, I'm so excited for this too. I have been following your work online for a while now and listening to your podcast, so I'm really thrilled to have you here Thank on my you. show. Yeah, of course. Um, today, we are going to be talking about a topic that doesn't necessarily make people feel super comfortable, but I know that you're going to have so many great solutions and ideas for people, so I just can't wait to get into everything. Um Maybe we should just start by giving everyone a bit of context first. I would love for you just to introduce yourself and tell us about the work that you do in the world. Perfect. So I actually started um, my first business uh, right out of high school. The like the summer I graduated, I started teaching dance classes in my parents' backyard. And I thought it was going to be more of a hobby, but it was just I gave a great product, a great service. And we had the dancers referring their friends moms telling their friends. And pretty soon we were at 100 kids and then 500 kids and it just started snowballing. So I ended up actually opening a dance studio. Now I have two performing arts academies. So we do music and dance. Um, it's now 20 years old. I've had mm -hmm. about, I think we've been hitting seven figures a year for over a decade already. Um, we have about 1,600 kids that come to us on a weekly basis. And I started to you just feel the effects of, oh, wow, running a small business is not as easy as everybody makes it look. They're like, oh, freedom. No freedom. It was like way less freedom yeah. than any other thing I was ever doing. So I realized I had to really start to get good at hiring, getting a team, getting systems. If I wanted to take a break, take a vacation, have off for dinner and not get a phone call, I had to figure out how to do that. So I started delegating. And then pretty soon I started to delegate myself right out of the business which is great if you didn't want to work at all, but I actually like working. I just didn't want to work 90 hours a week, right? Yeah. So then pretty soon that kind of sparked my second business where people just were seeing me and saying, hey, could you teach me how to do that? So now I have an online business as well that's about seven years old that I teach other small business owners how to do what I did, build a team, systematize, not have the business need them every second of the day. So my 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 framework is called well-oiled operations. And it's really just getting your business to run like a well-oiled machine without you. I love that. I love that it and it evolved organically too out of like the business that you had created and the problems that you had encountered in building that business and then helping other people. So I love that. That's great. Yeah. So let's talk about unforeseen obstacles and like times of crisis and how to handle these as an entrepreneur. Because of course, there's a lot of talk about a coming recession. And of course, we mm -hmm. are in some pretty turbulent times right now. But if you're running a business, like this can create quite a bit of panic, like wondering what the future holds and, and yeah. feeling like maybe I'm not quite ready for whatever is coming down the pipeline. So let's get into all of that stuff, shall we? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. 
So as somebody who has now been in business for 20 years, mm-hmm. I can tell you that there's there's going to be good times and there's going to be some not so great times, right? And it, it makes me feel a little bit better knowing there's nothing I did wrong. This is just a part of business, right? The economy is constantly fluctuating. There's, you know, unexpected things like with COVID and everything. We just, we, we didn't know was happening, right? Until it's here and we're all navigating it together. Yeah. So I think we just have to first come to realize that the hard times will happen. It's seasons just like you and your personal life, right? So it's going to happen and you can get through it, right? You are strong enough to get through it. You are in a space where you're listening to podcasts, like we're in a community, right? Where we can do this together. So I think it's one thing to think, how am I going to navigate this, right? And that can feel really scary and feel really, you can feel really alone. But if you remember, we're all doing this together, right? All of a sudden, it just feels like, okay, we have way more help. There's other people that have gone through it. And I think that's the biggest thing for me is just like, I'm either going to figure it out because I'm constantly resourceful and I'm looking for that solution, right? I'm I'm just going to keep going until I get the answer. And as long as you have that mindset and the mentality, you're going to be fine, right? It's when you start to say like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I Mm -hmm. want to get through this, right? And that's when you have to be really, really careful. Yeah, I love that. And I love starting with the mindset piece of things. Like I'm Mm -hmm. such a big believer in that, but really having that mindset that there are going to be solutions, I'm going to be okay, I'm not doing this alone. Like that, starting with that foundation, because if you start in panic mode, like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. And I'm all, I'm out here at sea all by myself. And, you know, that is going to make it hard for you to actually look for solutions if you believe that there really aren't. This is actually, the sky is falling and it's over. Um, Well, and one thing that I actually think has been an advantage is when things are easy, everybody is doing it, right? I mean, do I want that? Probably not, right? Like, yes, it'd be nice for me to be easy for me, but when it's easy for me, it's easy for everybody. So now I have to work even harder to stand out because it's easy, right? That's a good When times get, yeah, when times get tough, a lot of people quit. They don't have it in them. They don't want to keep going. So when times get tough, we start to like, be, it becomes less saturated. So there are, it's like, I don't want people thinking, oh my goodness, a recession could be awful. Recess, recession could be awful. It could be the best thing that happens to you, right? So I remember in 2008 with that recession, um, it was like, I started to get people calling saying, hey, you know, we're going to be closing our dance studio. Um, are you interested in purchasing some of our like ballet bars? Or we have like, you know, I'll sell, I'll sell you dance shoes at like super cheap prices that they're not even selling you, you know, the retailers aren't even selling you for. So we ended up saving a ton of money in the recession because some people, and it's not to say, oh, they failed. Sometimes people just are looking for like a perfect time to be done, right? Um, I know somebody that closed during COVID, they had a really successful career and they were like, this is just the time for me to be done. Like, this is a great time to end, right? So some people choose to leave and we get to capitalize on that. And I mean, I bought a ton of stuff where we literally... I mean, it, it helped us progress in the recession. So don't just think like negative circumstances could be negative to you. There could be some really per- like big perks that come your way as well. That's such a great point. And really, I don't think that many people think of it like that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, if you can figure out how you – like looking at it, it's just a silver lining kind of thing, right? Yeah. If you can be the one who is able to with, withstand and sustain yeah. through bad times when other people are dropping off for various reasons, then yeah, that your competitive pool is actually smaller. And yeah. then on the other side of that, you can be in a completely different position really at the top of your field. So that's really, yeah. that's a very cool yeah. like reframe, right? For mm-hmm. for hard times. Definitely a reframe. I mean, I remember when Facebook ads were doing so well and then they weren't. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, just tell yourself like everybody's going to stop doing Facebook ads. So this is going to be good for you. I definitely struggled for a little bit to get back into it, but then I am back in it and they're working really well for us. But I can't tell you how many of my friends are like, oh, Facebook ads don't work for us. Mm. So it's like a lot of people do kind of just opt out. And when they opt out, that's when the people like the survival of the fittest, right, get to come up and say, okay, I'm, I'm taking the lead here. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, right. So if somebody is keen to be one of those survivors um, and to really kind of like recession-proof their business, what kinds of things would you suggest? So I think just like seeing the recession, seeing the pandemic, right, watching just the my businesses in general, it it's really just comes back to business foundational principles, right? So number one, this is going to sound so silly, but I have to say it. You just need to make more than you spend. 
So you might lose revenue. You might dip in a recession. You might have dipped from the pandemic, right? But as long as you dip your expenses, it's okay, Mm. right? So I think for me, the pandemic was the first time in, what was that, probably 17 years in my business Mm -hmm. that I had ever gone down in revenue, ever. Mm. So for me, holy cow, this identity shift of like, wait a minute, I don't go down, Uh uh-uh. Um, it made me feel a little better that it was like, well, it is a like global crisis. So I feel like it wasn't just me, but it's not your fault. <laughs> yeah, it's not my fault. But um, what I realized very quickly was, okay, well, we just lost a lot of money. People stopped coming, but mm-hmm. how do we just make our, our how do we get our high expenses under it again? And we're back in the game. So my first thought was like, okay, we just got to get to break even. Yeah. So that's what I did. It, it wasn't like let's go make a million dollars again. It was like let's just break even. If I could just stay in the game by not losing money, like that's going to work. So I just went through my credit card and I started asking myself like, does this truly make me money in the business? If not, get rid of it. Next Mm -hmm. item, like does it make me money or does it not? Get rid of it. And I just got so lean. I did this with like just, you know, expenses, but I also did it with people, which I know is going to sound so tough, but you might be hiring people that are not making you money. And one of the like the biggest expenses in your business as you start to grow will become payroll. It will become your contractors, right? Your employees. So you have to really ask yourself, like, is this person worth two thousand dollars a month? Are they bringing in two thousand, or are they bringing in fourteen hundred? And I could literally just make six hundred bucks by letting them go, right? Yeah. And I know we feel bad, especially sometimes as women, we really feel bad. Like, but they're a nice person, and they're so great, and they're so loyal, and guys, we're running a business. Like we have to make sure we are spending less than we're making. So I think that is step number one is just get there. So I had, I learned that. I finally learned that in the pandemic, right? Like knowing, oh my goodness, what's happening. And then seeing that I almost have gained this sense of confidence of like, oh, I can get through anything. Like now I know the name of the game. It's like, whatever happens to me. Okay, great. I have to make hard choices. What I saw with clients that I was even coaching even today, some of them are still living in pre-2020. They're like, no, 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 we're a million dollar fill in the blank, right? This is what we do, but they're bleeding money. Mm. I'm like, you are no longer that business. You have not, like, you have not pivoted. You have, and I hate using that word because I ever used it in COVID, but like, <laughs> you've not adapted to what financially you're actually bringing in. So you can have a bad month. You can have a bad week. You can have a bad year. As long as you're making sure you're not just looking at gross revenue, but you're looking at expenses and you're trying to get them to make sense. And then once I got to break even, I was like, okay, how do we make just a little bit of profit? Right. And then once we were at a little bit, I was like, okay, let's keep climbing back up. And honestly, it was such a good thing for me to just discover that skill set of like, okay, I I never had to discover that skill set. I never had to cut my expenses because I was always growing. But it's like one of the most powerful skill sets to make me feel like I can get through anything, like I can figure this out. That is so – I mean, it's just it, – you're right. It does sound deceptively simple. It's like, obviously, <laughs> yeah. yes. But I think there's so much tied up in that, especially what you were saying about that identity piece and maybe even mm-hmm. like the ego piece too of like, oh, I'm uh, you know, I'm this kind of business and this is, this is my income. And yeah, I grow, grow, grow. Every year we're growing more and more. Yeah. And you're making it mean something about you or your identity or your ability yeah. as an entrepreneur or something along those lines yeah. and not not being flexible with the situation, right. saying, or well, yeah, in, that, yeah, go ahead. Being in denial, being like, yeah. well, if I, if I let this person go or if I stop paying for this and everybody's going to know money's not good. Okay. Especially the pandemic. Everybody knew money wasn't good. Like right. we don't have to pretend. Like we get to just say, hey – in a recession, you get to just tell people what's going on. Like you don't have to hide or feel guilty about it. You can make these big decisions. And it's just, it's part of running a business. You have to make tough, tough decisions sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Just toughen up, put on your big girl pants Mm -hmm. and then, you know, just do what needs to be done. Um, Yeah. yeah, Easy, easier to say, of course, than to actually execute. And I think you're absolutely right. Like that, that as women, we do tend to bring in the emotional side of things a little bit more yeah. readily. Um, also, I think like, you know, for my particular audience in the health and wellness, like the helping space, you know, we are, see ourselves as helpers. So it is mm-hmm. like harder to make those tougher decisions, but in tough times, yeah. you really do need to be able to make those tough decisions and cut expenses that are just not 
serving your bottom line right now so that you mm-hmm. can survive, so that you can live to fight the good fight onwards yeah. on the other side of things. Yeah. And if you don't have cash reserve built up right now, mm-hmm. I really suggest living leaner. I, I see that sometimes too where I, I I have my clients like tell me their numbers. So I know what's their revenue, their profit. Like I know all these things because it helps me really help them go next, right? Next steps. So sometimes I'm like, wait a minute. I just saw your bank – like I see your bank account. I know what's going on. <laughs> and you just took this crazy trip to the Bahamas at this five-star resort and – but yet you're stressed in your business because you don't have money, but you're spending like everything's okay. And that is where, I mean, you can do whatever you want, but don't complain how stressed you are about money when you're personally blowing it, right? And sometimes professionally, you're in the business spending money on crazy things because it's a write-off, like, right? It's yeah. like, oh, okay. It's a write-off. <laughs> I can go to the Bahamas and have a retreat, and it's, but it, it doesn't matter, right? So I think that's that's a big thing too is – if you're already a little nervous, I'm actually not that nervous because I am sitting on a lot of reserves knowing I don't know what's coming, right? Yeah. So that is something to really, really consider right now. Like, should I be spending as much as I'm spending? Do I have enough reserves? If like everything happens tomorrow and something big explodes and everybody wants to quit something because it's just too scary, are you going to be comfortable? Like, I know I have enough to make it through for quite a while. Yeah, that's that's such a good point. I mean, there are some obstacles that we can see coming and kind of prepare mm-hmm. in advance for them, and then some that we just t- totally are not going to see yeah. coming, like COVID for the yeah. obvious example, right? Um, so, so this sounds like I was going to ask you, like, what what are some things that we can do to prepare for? We don't know what is actually yeah. coming, and how do we figure out how to navigate those unforeseen obstacles? Yeah. So, I think you have to ask yourself, like. Have you ever struggled before? And what did you wish you had last time? Mm. I mean, that's one of the biggest things, right? That's good. Or, or what makes you nervous? What makes you anxious? What keeps you up at night? I think we all have different levels of, you know, risk tolerance, right? Some of us can live a lot leaner. Some of us are like, oh my goodness, I want to have every dollar saved in my bank account, right? So you have to know like what makes sense for you. So I'm glad you didn't say how much money should I have in the bank because it's so different for all of us, right? Yeah. And I would say talk to your CPA, but then even more than your CPA, how do you feel? Even if my CPA said you have too much money in the bank, like get, I'm like no, if if it helps me sleep at night, I'm good, right? Like I feel great about it. So you have to figure out like where you're at as well. So I think first, what do you feel like you're missing that you you are really wanting to kind of take control of now? So first, the making more than you're spending. I mean, always. Like in business, this is cash flow. You you need it. Cash flow is king. That is the first thing I would be doing. Once I'm positively spending more than I'm, than I'm, sorry, making more than I'm spending, <laughs> that's when I'm building up the cash reserves, right? Mm-hmm. But I would also be looking at how, and I, I think staying lean is something we should always be doing. Now, I am a spender. I mean, I, my businesses, I'm spending, I'm spending a million dollars a year more in both of my businesses. Like, I'm not a cheap person. Mm-hmm. But when I say lean, I just mean, I'm looking for healthy profit margins, right? Because if for some reason next month my income tanked, well, if my health, if my healthy profit margin was there, it might still mean that I I broke even. It doesn't mm-hmm. mean I'm going under, right? Mm-hmm. So that is where I wouldn't be living so close to that break even line. I love a good healthy profit margin for the what ifs, right? Um, and then I would just say. Like simplify the business, right? The more you can simplify, the the less expensive it's going to cost, right? The more you expand the business with lots of different offerings and lots of different this, you have to figure out how to market all of those things. You have to figure out how to fulfill all of those things. You're taking away so much mental energy from just the one thing you could be selling, right? And focusing on and just really keeping clean and simple. And I think just our brains just want to get complex, right? So the, the more we can simplify, the easier this is going to be. And you can still have a simple business in the seven-figure and above range. True. Yeah. I love that um, reminder to simplify. I mean, yeah. it's such good advice, like really all, at all levels of business. Yeah. It's so easy to fall down that like spiral of like adding complexity. But especially mm-hmm. this is such a good reminder of like as we're maybe heading towards something uncertain and maybe some tougher yeah. times, like – what how can you simplify even more and even like these just mm-hmm. incremental like just extra layers of 
fanciness or complexity that you really just yeah. like if you took a, a objective look at things, do you need that? Is that just adding more um, right. you know complexity that isn't really – but yeah, simple, yeah. So I'm all about that, that simplicity. Yeah. That's so good. I also think too – we know recession, inflation, like present tense, right? That is that yeah. is a thing. How can we change our messaging in case somebody has those fears? How can we still have some really great messaging that ties in what's going on but makes them feel compelled to still buy with you, right? Mm. So I would be really changing up your messaging and talking about it. A lot of times people say, okay, don't talk about it because then you put it in their head. They're mm. already thinking this stuff, right? <laughs> so just like say it. And then, you know, acknowledge it, right? And then continue to have that messaging really go deep. So I always tell people, like, don't cut your marketing. Make mm -hmm. it more compelling when times like this are happening. Mm, I love that. So you're talking yeah. about, like, your marketing message, like how you're actually showing up in the marketplace yeah. where – people, like your potential clients and customers, mm -hmm. they're going to be feeling it too. So it's not just us yeah. as like entrepreneurs feeling that like pinch, but yeah. it's they're feeling it too, obviously. I mean, that's what where this whole cycle comes from. But um, so tweaking your messaging just to be transparent and call it out and yeah. be like, we're all going through this. So how can you, you know, kind of- And it, it could even that? be something like, I'm just trying to like make up, oh, sorry, uh, make up something on the spot for marketing in like the health coach space. Mm -hmm. You might say something like 10 ways to focus on your health in a recession. Mm, that's like, so good. Actually, like, just say it. And and it's like, oh, wow. Okay. I do want to know. I, I am excited about focusing on my health and I do want to hear. And it could still tie into why it's so important, even in a recession, to not let go of your health and wellness, right? And like just bringing that messaging in. Because some, some people might think, well, like this, you know, this is selfish for me to still be taking care of myself when we really need to cut out some of these things. But when you educate that this is not selfish and this is one of the most important things and here's why, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think that is a really good way to really lean into maybe somebody's mindset that's thinking, oh, should I cut this out? Should I not? I feel guilty. My husband's seeing it every month or mm -hmm. anything like that, right? Yeah. Just calling it out, right? Because it's like you said, mm -hmm. it's on their minds anyway. They are thinking about it anyway. So rather than let it be the elephant in the room that yeah. you're not addressing and you're kind of pretending isn't there – just call it right out and use yep. it as part of your messaging of why this is more important than ever before. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love that. Um, I want to talk about leadership for a sec, like because yeah. I know that this is a big topic for you and something that you talk a lot about. Like, what are some effective ways or you know ways that people can be solid leaders in times of crisis? Yeah. So I think first, definitely leading your community, right? They are looking at you. They want to see what you're thinking. They want to see what you're saying. They want to see what you're doing, right? So really being an example during times of crisis, right? Mm -hmm. Like I, th I think people show their true colors, right, when things pop out like this. So how do you want to show up? What do you want to do? Who do you want to be? Or be intentional about that. Decide that now, right? Showing up for your team. As you're thinking about, you know, having people help you, what happens is they're looking at you like, boss, are we okay? <laughs> are you going to be able to keep paying me, right? right. <laughs> What's going on? Fill me in. So you do want to, like, again, acknowledge it. I know we're in a recession. I know inflation's hurting this, or I know we're starting to hear, you know, certain objections about this um, with our clients, but here's what we're working on. Here's why we're going to continue to succeed during times like this. Here is, like, you want them like we always, we market to our clients, but we forget, forget to market to our team. We need to market to our, like, just like we want our clients to stay with us and we have to keep selling them. We have to keep selling our team on why this is the place to be. Right. Yeah. So I, we have a pretty large team. We have like over 50 employees in our studios and we still had a few people quit at like at the recession. Like mm -hmm. they were like, and I don't think it was, they were thinking I wasn't going to be able to handle it. I thought they, I think they think, I think they thought I don't know that this dance studio world is going to make it with the right. shutdowns and like children. Mm -hmm. So some of them got nervous and they left and found different jobs. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of them stayed with us even when we were closed because they were like believing in my vision. I actually had one of my employees say, I am so glad you are my boss because I know you're going to figure this out, right? Like that feels amazing to know that she is sticking with me and still here, right? Not going anywhere because she knows but if your people don't know, 
they're going to be real nervous, right? They're going to start looking. They're going to start going, oh, oh, this is this business isn't going well. So you want to keep like showing the future, right? Shining the light on the vision, where we're going, why we're going to go there, how we're serving, how we're still helping, why we're such an important part of this community and why people need us, right? Because people want to be bought into that mission. So I think you've got two type different types of people that you've got to focus on for sure. That's such a good point. And I mean, it was when you were describing it, it did make me think of like, you know, we call out our marketing messaging just to say, this mm-hmm. is the situation. Here's what you need to know. And it's the exact same thing with your yeah. inside in your business, with your team. It, it, again, they're they're all worried about the same thing that we're all worried yeah. about. So just call it out and talk mm-hmm. about like proactively, like getting ahead of it is what yeah. I hear you saying, which yeah. makes a lot of sense. Because yeah, people are going to get twitchy and nervous. Yeah. I have two different businesses. Like the mm-hmm. online consulting, we blew up March of 2020. It was like everybody was so scared. They wanted our help. Yeah. So I actually say to them, like, guys, I'm not worried about a recession at all for this business because really when times get really tough, people get really, I don't want to say desperate, but they just, they're like, they kind of surrender. Like I need help. Somebody please help me. Right. Mm-hmm. And I don't see us hurting because of it. I see business owners needing it more than ever. Mm-hmm. So I think that business is going to continue to grow. My studios, I would be, I mean, I have no idea what's going to happen, but looking at 2008, we were affected, but it took a little bit. People didn't quit their children's like extracurricular activities. Mm -hmm. It was about two years. Like we felt it in 2010, not in 2008. It was like mom cut out everything she possibly could before she went to her child, right? Yes. So (laughs) I'm like, okay, (laughs) yeah, right. So I knew like that, it, it, whatever it, it really hits in my community, it's going to be a little bit later for me. Mm-hmm. But I, I know that now and I can prep, right? Mm-hmm. So, it, and even just hearing me say that, it's like, okay, if you know mom is going to cut herself out first, how do we make sure this doesn't just impact her? How mm-hmm. do we remind her that this is like, I bought a book that was like raising better humans. And it, I thought it was going to be this amazing parenting book. I mean, it was, but what's funny is it was like, meditate and your kids will be better. (laughs) It was all about like, just take care of yourself. You meditate every day and you will raise the most amazing humans. And this is literally what the book was. And I thought it was Hmm. be all these strategies to teach my children. And it was like, no, mom, you have to take care of you. And when you you take care of you, your kids are going to be amazing. Right. So as a natural consequence, I love it. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. So it's like, how do you maybe lean into that marketing of maybe your person is going to think I've got to cut this out and you've got to explain why this is one of the most powerful things that he or, like she is in to want to, you know, take care of everybody else as a mom does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so smart to do the thinking work ahead of time around yeah. those things. Like how are you going to reposition yourself mm-hmm. so that you are coming out as still something that people need yeah. to invest in or stay on board with or, you know, whatever it is. I love that. Yeah. That's such great advice. Um, we're going to – I want to ask you a couple more things. These are – well, this is just um, something that I ask all my guests. I mean, of course, this this podcast is about wellness. We're in the health and wellness world. So I always yeah. do like to ask my guests about things that they do to support their own health, like physical, yeah. mental, emotional. I mean, you're in – you have run dance studios. Like yeah. I imagine that that was a big part of your – is a big part of your life. But I would love for you just to give our audience some ideas. And this is whether people yeah. are entrepreneurs or not. Like what is yeah. something that yeah. you – one way that you support your own well-being, something that makes yes. your life better. I'd so love to hear. So I am very into my health and wellness. And part of it is is truly so that I can be running these two seven-figure businesses. I can yeah. be a present mom. I can do all of this stuff. So um, I mean, I am I'm like, there's literally so many things that I'm like, where do I even begin? Like I'm <laughs> I can see my aura ring. Like I am very mm-hmm. dedicated to my sleep. I I quickly, I only had like 17 minutes before we were interviewing. And I'm like, I gotta get outside today. So I quickly went, like most people would now look at 17 minutes and think, I can squeeze a walk in. I'm like, nope. Yeah. I don't care if it's a 10 minute walk. So I quickly went outside and just got some fresh air, took a little walk. Um, I'm thinking about like how am I gonna eat throughout the day? How am I gonna squeeze in that nutrition? So for me, it really comes down to like fueling my body. I look at food as fuel. I look at it as like, how am I going to do all the things I need to do today? But then the recharging too. What am I going to do to recharge? What am I going to do to reset? So I do I do all the things. I mean. <laughs> That's so amazing. Yeah. I'm going to have to have you back on just to like give a masterclass oh my on goodness. how to stay well and healthy when you're a super busy entrepreneur. Yeah. So. And I mean, there's things too where 
if I feel cold coming on, I'm like, oh my goodness, I cannot afford to be sick. So I will like run and get an IV drip. And then I'm doing like all these different like protocols because I'm like, do you know how much it's going to cost me to be off of work yes. tomorrow? Like mm-hmm. I have to make sure I can function, which is another reason I am so just like obsessed really with just staying healthy, doing all of the things. Yeah. I love that. So helpful. Okay, cool. Th- I mean, this has been just so fun, Stacy. There's just Thanks. been a ton of useful things like to get people in the right headspace, to not be afraid of what's coming, but to really just yeah. take the knowledge that, you know, whether – you know, whether predictions come true or not, there are going to be hard times. That's that's inevitable. Yeah. Um, and so and here, how to prepare. Yeah. And here's the deal. Even if it doesn't happen, doesn't affect us, all the strategies I gave you are just going to make you a healthy business owner. Yeah. Solid There is literally strategies. nothing mm-hmm. you could say like, oh, shoot, I'm so mad I saved all that money because Stacey said that and <laughs> right. I don't even need that. It's like, no, like literally everything I gave you is just solid business foundational principles you will want no matter what. Yeah. I love that. Healthy business, healthy you, Mm -hmm. healthy bottom line, like all of the things. So Mm -hmm. that's so good. Um, Before I let you go, of course, tell us where people can go to learn more about you and connect with you. Yeah. So my podcast is called Well-Oiled Operations. I talk all things business, um, really just like how, like everything you just said, how to get the business healthy, how to get it running without you so that you can take care of yourself, be present with your family, all of that. And then my next biggest place is Instagram. You can just find me at Stacey Tushel. Nice. Okay, perfect. Yeah. I will put those in the show notes so people can find you easily. And thank you so much for being here. This is just a great conversation. I really enjoyed it. Well, I hope that you enjoyed sitting in on my conversation with Stacy. I would love to hear your thoughts on the things that came up during our conversation. And I'm really curious to know what is one thing that you're going to do right now just to get yourself prepared for economic hard times or unforeseen challenges that might lay ahead. If you are watching on YouTube, then just drop me a comment below this video. Or if you're listening to the audio of this episode, then find me on Instagram and let me know. I would love to hear from you and I would love to just continue this conversation. Okay, that's a wrap for today. Have a wonderful week and I will see you again very soon.